to the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County work session for Wednesday, May 18th. Can we all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all for attending this evening. Dr. Salins could not attend this work session. She has appointed Amy Hudock as secretary of the board for this meeting. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to approve the agenda as presented. All those in favor say aye. Aye. The motion is approved. Do I, has everyone had a chance to read the closed session minutes for Wednesday, May 4th? Yes. yes. Any questions or comments? Do I have a motion to accept the closed session minutes? So moved. I have a second. Second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to accept Wednesday, May 4th, closed session minutes. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion is carried. Open session minutes. Everyone's had a chance to read those? Yes. Any questions on them? Do I have a motion to accept the open session minutes for May 4th? So moved. I have a second. second. Thank second. you. Questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to accept open session minutes for Wednesday, May 4th. All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion is carried. Good evening, Mr. Page. You're up. We have Agricultural Day presentation. And a bevy of ladies with you to present. Yes. God bless. Yes. Where do you want to fall? Okay. Yep. Oh, do you want, yep. why don't you come in? No, you're good. You're good. You sure? Yeah. It's good to see you all this evening. Thank you so much for coming. Thanks for having us. Yes. Um, good afternoon, Vice President Harper, Ms. Sudak, uh, board members, executive team. Uh, for the record, my name is Michael Page. I'm the supervisor of instruction. And today we are presenting uh, a uh, presentation on our Agriculture Awareness Day. And I'll let the, the ladies introduce themselves. This is our com uh, part of our committee for the Agri Awareness uh, Day, and uh, I've had the pleasure of working with them for several years, and I'm excited to be in front of you um, presenting this and, and showcasing what we were able to do. So good evening. My name is Jenny Rhodes. I work for the University of Maryland Extension. I'm a county agriculture agent here. Also let you know that I grew up in the school system. My children went here and my grandchildren went here and went to this school, so I have a huge attachment, mm -hmm. um, and I thank you all for what you do. Thank you. Good evening, my name is Jessica Clark. I am with Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit. I am a crop insurance specialist, um, but I actually do, fun fact, have a degree, not a degree and certification in teaching high school, but decided oh. not to do it. Um, <laughs> but Still I also, home. yes, a strong uh, volunteer in 4-H in this county as well. So familiar with a lot of the families in this area. I'm Lee Bridgman. I'm a program assistant at University of Maryland Extension in Queen Anne's County, the Jenny, and I work with the agriculture and the horticulture programs there. Thank you. Welcome. Oh, and we have one member that's not here, um, Janelle Eck McHenry. Um, she works for Thompson Consulting. She does um, a lot of work with grain producers and um, lots of other organizations. But she has a little one, so she couldn't be here. But I'm sure she's probably watching us. <laughs> and a Queen Anne's grad, too. Yeah, right. that's she's right. Through, yes. She was a student, because yeah. I remember her as a student. <laughs> <laughs> so was Lee. <laughs> All right, very good. So the purpose is to provide the Queen Anne's County Board of Education with an overview of the 2022 Agriculture Awareness Day experience that welcomed all seventh grade students throughout the county. A little bit of background because uh, you know this is this is coming back from our uh, kind of a COVID break I would say um, we weren't able to do this for two years um, and uh, just wanted to give you guys a little bit of background I've worked with these fine ladies for um, several years fine-tuning this program and um, we were able to align this to our science standards and our environmental literacy standards so all the stations that the students attend they're actually 
actually receiving um, this, this grade level standards for for their, their curriculums. Um, they're also, um, we really focus on a lot of the content that they learn in, in their classrooms. So we've worked hand in hand trying to make sure that the experiences that they're having um, really meet what they're actually learning in the classroom. And when they come to the 4-H park, they're really continuing their education um, as, as, as they're experiencing those different things. Um, the educational standards, uh, sorry, stations throughout the day provide insight in numerous agricultural topics uh, and allow the students the hands-on experience. And one thing we really wanted to focus on um, also was that we um, highlight some of the careers and some of the opportunities that these students may have um, in terms of technology, in terms of um, uh, breeding in terms of uh, harvesting and so on. So and we'll go through all those different various stations and highlight all the different things that we do there. But it is just an amazing day um, that, that to does take a good amount of planning and, and um, it, it, it really has grown over the five, six years that we've been together doing this. Yeah. And I'll say when we first um, thought about this and trying to figure out what grade we wanted to really kind of hone in on, we decided seventh grade because we feel like they're getting ready for high school, they're thinking about careers, and if we can kind of help them to maybe find a career that they didn't even know, you know, link back to agriculture because everybody thinks agriculture is about just being a farmer, and it's far from that. And one of the other reasons besides Mr. Page and um, partnering with us was I was able to hire Janelle uh, when she was in college as an intern. So this is the power of interns, something that I didn't have the staff to do. I didn't, you know, you have ideas, but just, so the powers of interns that came in and, the, and she put this all together and brought the ag community together and we kind of moved forward from there. Jessica? Sure, so I will take on explaining what each of our stations were at the Agriculture Awareness Day uh, this year. This was kind of my thing, kind of structuring what we did with the stations and what kind of people we pulled in to put at each station. Um, but we had a aquaculture station where they were learning about the important importance of oysters and how they clean our bay um, and how that's very important to the agriculture industry. Um, they had some live oysters there and the kids could see them in a tank, um, kind of, you know, learn about the breeding genetics and all of that kind of stuff that goes along with aquaculture and oysters as well. Uh, seed to harvest. That station was very popular this year. Um, we had a combine at that station and the purpose of that station was to show the kids kind of what they're seeing when they drive down the road in the fields. They're seeing that equipment all over the county all the time. They're seeing those crops in the field. So we wanted them to relate that to what they see and see what those crops produce. So they're seeing the corn, the soybeans. So then they were also learning at that station, okay, where does that corn and soybean go when it leaves that field? And how are we using that every day? Um, and then they also got to see the combine, which was a huge hit. Um, we had someone there explaining how the corn goes up in that machine as an ear of corn and comes out as just the shell of corn. Um, and they got to see how before the equipment, they had to shell corn, um, which oh, yeah. they all <laughs> um, really liked that. We had the old and the new, so <laughs> that was good. Um, very popular station there. And then we moved them to Harvest to Table, which they were seeing, you know, basically, okay, you're harvesting um, vegetables and produce. We kind of concentrated on that area there, and they learned um, safe ways to clean your food when you get it home from the store, the market, wherever you're purchasing it, um, as well as food safety. They had a cool germ activity with a blue light to see you know, how germs spread and stuff like that, why it's important to wash your food when you get it home, um, as well as they learned the different 
um, produce when it's actually in season. And we tried to get them to understand, yes, you can buy strawberries in the store anytime during the year, but they're gonna taste best this time of year because in Maryland, they're in season right now. <laughs> Um, so just kind of stuff like that we wanted them to learn there and then of course the other popular station is the farm animal station the most popular yeah, probably the most popular when you look at our surveys um, but that's because of course they get to see live animals live um, and all the people that take care of them um, we've got beef cattle dairy cattle horses baby pigs baby goats um, lambs they got to see a shearing demonstration on the lambs um, and learn you know how their wool is used for clothing as well as we had a lesson to correspond with that where they learned about you know why animals were d domesticated way back then how we use them for a large protein source now um, learning about genetics as well and how breeders use genetics um, and tying that into how they care for their animals and all of that um, so those were the four main stations each of them were an hour long um, but we broke that up pretty much in each station so they weren't in the same spot for an hour um, we kind of either had them do a lesson first and then something interactive or we had small substations within those big stations um, so we kind of made sure that we kept their attention and just didn't have them sitting somewhere for an hour um, and then we also had a cool drones and technology demonstration right as they unloaded the buses um, before they headed anywhere. And that was just a drone demonstration flying above the 4-H park. And then they described how um, that type of technology is heavily, heavily used now in agriculture um, to look for disease, uh, wildlife damage on crops. You know, it's way easier for that drone to go up in the air and catch all that than a farmer to try to see that from the road. So um, we just wanted to show that to them and that's pretty much a gist of what they got. <laughs> and we've changed the station over the years. We've yeah, we've made some alterations. Um, but I would say, I think, in my opinion, this year we really yeah, nailed it down on yeah. what they is most useful to them, I would say. Have you all been a part of it since You've been partnering with Michael? Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All of us. Yep. That's nice. So the same mm -hmm. people have been doing it. That's yeah. great. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so community involvement. Uh, we couldn't do this with just the four of us, five of us. Um, so we have pulled in a lot of different people. This is a picture uh, taken the first day. So there are 4-Hers, uh, um, students. Uh, from 10 years old, I'll say up. Um, the FFA, the high school kids um, come out and help. I mean, it is just an array of, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about. So of course the superintendent were here, was there. Um, she couldn't be here tonight, but um, Ms. Hudak, you were there. Um, and I think maybe one of the board members was somebody uh, who was Mr. there. Mr. Kibler. You were there, yeah. yeah, so thank you for coming. Uh, we had the uh, assistant dean of the College um, of Agriculture for College Park. That's part of Lee and I, our boss. Uh, the Secretary of Agriculture was there, Joe Bartenfelder. Some of the county commissioners, we had the Executive Director of Maryland Farm Bureau, and he was just blown away. He had not been, even though Farm Bureau is one of our main sponsors, because we have to have someone to filter you know, money through, and everybody kind of belongs to Farm Bureau, and he just couldn't believe. Um, so he's asked us to put this up for, for a state award. And I have to thank um, John Murdoch and thank you for the, um, Sid, for the county buses and because that is really um, one of the hardest things. We can put all this stuff together, but the coordination, Janelle does all the coordination of getting the buses there and that is pretty much, a pretty, I won't say a nightmare, but it's pretty tough. Full time job. Yes, so thank you very sure. much uh, for that because without that, um, and we will, um, let's go on to the next page and then we'll talk a little bit. And of course, we couldn't do this without sponsorship. This cost um, a right good, uh, probably $12,000 it costs us to put um, this on. And with the University of Maryland Extension, um, the Farm Bureau, like I said, um, grain producers, Mid-Atlantic Farm Credit, uh, Soil Conservation, the FFA, uh, County Commissioners, of course, the Board of Education, Maryland Soybean Board, 
Uh, Jack Wilson has been instrumental in getting us money from the Upper Shore Regional Council that has uh, really helped us a lot. Um, this year also, um, we will be receiving, uh, the it's the America's Farmers Grow Communities. Comes out of the Bayer uh, Fund. We had a local farmer that applied for this grant for $5,000 and he is gonna give that money to Farm Bureau for Ag Awareness, he and his wife. So that's Linda and Jimmy Hall. They've given it to other you know, uh, fire companies, but that will come to, to us, so. Um. <coughs> We have 4-H clubs that participate. I said students, um, Purdue, uh, you can see, let's see, Growmark, which is a local um, seed uh, company, Caldwell Bankers. So it's not only just the ag in industry, there's other people, or ag, I'll say, ag community, ag community um, people um, in our business community also. Uh, let's see, who else have I not talked about? Uh, Try Gas and Oil. Waterman's Realty, Tidewater Seeds, Donny No Farms. We have some 4-H uh, clubs that, that uh, give us money. Nago Farm Service. Mount Air. Mount Air, Atlantic Tractor, Gorman Spraying, Godfrey's, and well, I said Linda and Jimmy Hall. So you can see there, I mean, this this is money that is coming in. I mean, not to say the volunteer hours that, you know, everyone else puts in. So we couldn't do this without our ag community. It's, am it's amazing. <clears throat> You know how many people come out to support this event. It's it's incredible and it's and it's it's really awesome. I attended one of the Farm Bureau breakfasts pre-COVID and it was packed. I mean, there must have been 100, 150 people in that room, and it was so good to see the sponsorships then too. Yeah, we have a good we have a really good ag community. They really do step up and help us when we need money for things. And Brian Stokes was there, but you mentioned FFA. Yeah, was yeah, he yeah. there in the capacity of FFA? And he had yes. students from the high school? Yes, yes. both days. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so that's nice. I mean, he's our CTE teacher. He teaches ag at the high mm -hmm. school, so. Yeah, he's an yeah. integral part of all this. Yeah. yeah. You know. Yep. And he's one of those, if you grab them, then he can kind of take that and run with it, too. Yeah. Also, we had Connie Dean come out oh. um, one day cause to because she's working on doing the internships and apprenticeships, we'd really like to get Ag in the mix, so she was really inspired by what she saw. So I think that's good. That's good. Sure. Um, after, we, this year we, actually this is the second year we've done this, but we decided to do a Agriculture Awareness Day essay contest. And that's really um, a lot for those of us here that put it all together, we kind of want to see exactly how we're impacting those kids that day. Um, so we give them a little bit of an incentive to do this. Um, we did select a first place winner from each school this year. They will receive a set of Apple AirPods um, as well as a ice cream and snow cone <laughs> coupon for the fair oh, yeah. this year. <laughs> and then second place and third place will get $50 and then $25 and coupons as well. Um, we had a lot of entries. Um, I want to say we had close to 60 essays wow. and a yeah. few PowerPoints um, that nice. we went through yeah. two weeks ago. Yeah, We read through all of them, um, selected our winners, and um, it was just really cool for us to see, you know, kind of really what they pulled from the day and what was their most exciting part. Um, the combine and the animals, I think, were touched in almost every essay. So we know that they were a hit for sure, um, but we enjoy reading those and we kind of feel like it's a good way for them to reflect on the day and kind of see what they got out of it. Nice writing assignment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And they had options too. Yeah. yeah. Yes. We yeah, like, you know, very we, nice. we gave them options to do a video, a PowerPoint, mm -hmm. write an essay, whatever, you know, however they wanted to express themselves um, and answer that question, how does agriculture affect your life every day? Because that was the main point we were trying to get across. So. And it's really great to see how they how it has changed them. So they, they, they do recognize the impact that agriculture has on, on them, their families, the community. And it, it's, it's, it's really nice to see them, you know, you can read their excitement about it. You can read their uh, how they have their mindset has changed in terms of 
what I see when I drive down the road in Queen Anne's County, you know, when I see those farms, what actually goes into that. So that's, it's really, really nice to see that and, and, and uh, get that from those seventh graders. And you'll see them June, when will we be here? June, uh, the, the June meeting, we uh, will be recognizing them. So oh, nice. yeah. um, we'll- The students. And I yeah. think the students. our, students, yes. yeah. Yeah. I think our essay winner we picked will really capture exactly yeah. what mm -hmm. it was a good- I'll Share with you. Yep. So we got some successes to share. Sure, sure. We wanted to make sure you guys saw yeah. those. So University of Maryland uh, Extension is a science and research-based statewide education system. So one of the big things we like to do, which is, <laughs> is to measure the uh, impact of our programming. So we did a pre and a post test for, or we'll call it a survey, for the students to see if they learned anything while they were out there. And we had a lot of questions that related specifically to the stations, but the two questions that we're gonna look at the results for uh, were more general, and we feel like they really uh, capture um, what we feel were successes for the day. So this first one, what is your level of knowledge of agriculture farming in Maryland before the Agriculture Awareness Day? And uh, took the two top answers, which were they felt they, had more than average or a great deal of knowledge and it increased from 13.4 to 35.3 percent of the respondents so we felt that that was really good um, and the second question does agriculture affect your life every day um, about half of them thought it did before but it went up to uh, 80 percent almost 80 percent after so we thought those responses were um, really encouraging so and then Lee, you want to talk about, you ask them to, um, we ask them they can write in something too. Yeah, we, well, so the first day was pretty cold. We got a lot of, we were really cold responses, but um, they, they really- It was a chilly day. Yeah, yeah they, it was pretty cold. I have my gloves on. <laughs> they really enjoyed the animals and um, they really enjoyed the, the, the equipment. So, you know, going forward, we always like to take these comments and they, we did get some comments say we're always working to be more interactive and so that's a challenge and so every year we, we try to help that make that happen. So, um, yeah, always they like the, they want more animals is what they say. I think if the whole day was just four <laughs> barns of animals, we they would probably know. be happy. Yeah, so. Well, then they need to go to the fair. That's right. Sure. There you go. <laughs> Yeah. So, in conclusion, I just want to thank you all for all the hard work you've done. Well, thank um, you, Michael. It, it's a wonderful day uh, for all the seventh graders, and it wouldn't be possible without you all. So, I want to publicly thank you guys. Um, but if anybody is interested, we do have a, a, a Agriculture Awareness Day video. I believe uh, Mr. Strait was able to put that together. Yeah. So, thank That's you great. for that. Um, it highlights some of the things that we were able to do that day. So, go ahead and uh, view that. At, you know, at your leisure and um, the committee was excited to host the students again we were, we were really excited to get back up and running it was it was it was I know that a couple groups of seventh grade students were upset that they weren't able to attend and um, you know that it's just the way that things things are but um, they were excited to get back after it um, you know thank you to the the seventh grade teachers, they really did a good job. The principals getting everything organized. Um, so, you know, they were excited to get back out there and have those experiences with their students. You know, some, I heard one student say that was the first time they had, they had been back out and uh, on a field trip. So, you know, that was, that was good to hear too, that we're getting back to it and, and we're moving forward. Um, and the committee will continue to evaluate as we talked about, look at our, our surveys, our successes, things we need to improve on. And we look forward to next year um, it's a great great opportunity and it's it's I think it's becoming well known around the state that we yes. do an awesome job and you know other counties are looking to model off of us and um, it's it's just another way to give our students that hands-on education that we look so forward to 
Um, so I don't know if you want to say anything final or if you all have questions. If you guys have any uh, questions. Really, really impressive. Yeah. Thank you so much for all that. And I'm sorry that I missed it, but I was really lucky enough when I was on the Economic Development Commission to take the ag tour when uh, Miss Lee and Miss Jenny took us around. We were able to go see the um, dairy farm, and we were watching the tomatoes and saw the family on the back of the can who, because mm -hmm. uh, they highlighted the family farms that they were using, um, and it was amazing. I mean, I. You know, the before and after would probably be very similar to me. I, I realized, though, ag does play a big role, but it was crazy how much um, the, that, that tour uh, changed me, although I could have done without the chicken farm because <laughs> that's a massive amount of chickens and, a, um, and, and the smell. But that's okay. But what really talking oh, about, I'm so money. glad Connie <laughs> Dean was there because I think it's going to be great for the um, options for careers because I remember, Miss Jenny, you were talking about she had gotten a complaint about from a new uh, Queen Anne's County resident who had just moved in and they had moved in next to a chicken farm. <laughs> um, not too close, but apparently too close for their uh, sensitive uh, smeller. And they made a comment and a complaint about the smell. And Miss Jenny said, well, the first thing I wanted to say was, to me, that smells like money. <laughs> she just said that. <laughs> yes, she did. Money coming that in and money going out. Struck you know. always. So that would be, that's, oh, I hope that they realize what a great opportunity for, because we need our farmers. Um, and if we can stop developing our land and keep it farm, that would be amazing. Anyone else? Ms. Shannon? Oh, good. Questions? Oh, thank you all for coming. Thank, thank you so much. Thank you thank so you. much. Yeah. God bless you guys. Thanks for thank keep, you ladies. keeping you're it welcome. up. Mr. Page, you're still on deck. I'm still on <laughs> <laughs> deck. And Ms. Pullen. Good evening. All right, thank you. <laughs> Okay, top three buttons. I'm not sure I see it. There you go. That's the print I got. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah, thank you. All right. All right, so I'll introduce myself again. I'm Mr. Page. I am a supervisor of instruction, and we are here, Ms. Poole and I are here to kind of give you all an update of our um, Gears 2 Initiative 3 outdoor exploration. Um, we have talked about this before. It's the outdoor classrooms coming from our Gears grant. Um, and uh, we just wanted to give you guys a quick update in terms of what that looks like and, and where we are in our uh, progress of getting those done. Um, so the purpose is to provide you all, the Board of Education, with an update on the progress of the Gears 2 Initiative 3 outdoor exploration timeline and construction. So just to recap, just so that we were all on the same page here, um, this was uh, federal funding that was provided by the governor. Uh, it's the governor's emergency relief funds. And um, in April, we received those funds. Those funds are both for these outdoor classrooms, um, but it's also for some GT uh, initiatives and summer school initiatives that we're working on. So a portion of the money is also allocated to other items, uh, but we're here just to speak in terms of the, the outdoor classrooms. Um, and just an FYI for you all, just so you know that the grant does end um, in 2000, September of 2023. So we're about a year in, um, and uh, we are working towards uh, getting a lot of the um, the materials ready for for bid. Um, here is the timeline. Uh, the timeline has shifted a little bit, so those last dates um, have kind of have moved a little bit based upon some of the items that we've had to adjust on. Um, so just so you know, we came to you all in December, uh, just to recap, and we, we brought on Becker Morgan Inc. to kind of a, uh, go through the whole uh, building. Um, 
construction, construction documents, documents, bid documents. Bid documents. Um, so they've been uh, outstanding. We did visits to all the schools, all the sites. We located where we were going to put those uh, those those new outdoor classrooms. We also looked into where these utilities would go. Um, April 14th, we finalized two prototypes, which we're going to talk about today, um, and bring that to you all to kind of view and, and get some of your input in terms of that. Uh, and then uh, we are looking to finalize the construction <coughs> bid uh, materials, I would say, next week. So this stuff has been, like I said, has been pushed back a little bit. Uh, we look to release the bid documents, I believe, into June, and then uh, the actual board approval for a qualified contractor wouldn't come until probably close to August. We're hoping for the August meeting. We're hoping meeting. for the August meeting. Um, and so uh, we're going to prepare all those materials, uh, hopefully get some good bids in there, and then bring them towards, you know, for your approval um, at that time. So some of that has, a, has, has been adjusted. And there is a little note there, construction will vary depending on the availability of work and materials. So. Here are the two prototypes, and if you want to jump in, you can help me out here. But uh, these are, you know, the one, uh, the one is labeled uh, the glue lamb pavilion structure. That is uh, a similar structure that you would see at our our parks. Um, the uh, the structure would come with a uh, slab of on a slab of concrete, and then it would kind of have those posts. And we're hoping to possibly get electric run out there, uh, and then it would have obviously the roof. The one on the right is a shade structure. There are some sites that we have in our county and at, at our schools that it was very difficult to um, bring in uh, and and put in a slab of concrete and bring in these these large. Um, materials. So we opted to potentially have the shade pavilion structures as an option around that. Um, we're not, like I said, in some of those places we're not able to get into. So having that alternative shade pavilion structure was was a good alternative to that. Are they both permanent structures? Like does the shade pavilion have to be taken down during certain weather conditions? So the, and uh, if I am say it wrong, but uh, the the manufacturers do um, recommend that they are taken down at certain times, so high winds are one of those storms. Uh, also, uh, to preserve them, it may be good to take them down, you know, within the winter winter time frames. Um, so, so they, they there is recommendations to have those <coughs> taken down if, if necessary. So, is there some sort of maintenance contract that goes with it? Because when you're taking stuff down and putting it back up, there's the potential to damage it. So, how do we make sure that they're gonna? be taken care of during that time. I think as we get into the final bid documents, we'll be able to give you a little more information on that. So right now, the only two places that we're considering the shade structures would be at the high schools. And the high schools indicated that the courtyard areas are probably the ones, the areas that would be utilized most regularly, especially in a post-pandemic environment, trying to get the students outside for lunchtime and for extracurricular activities, that that would be the area that would be most beneficial. That gives us the problematic items of how do we get a concrete truck into the middle of Queen Anne's County High School. And so we looked at the alternative of the shade structure. We are just in the process of talking about how we're going to formulate these bid documents and how we'll write some alternates into those bids. What I believe we anticipate is that we're going to look at priorities of elementary schools first, middle schools, and then the high schools. So the two high schools would probably, if funding does not allow, we would probably be looking at something alternative alternative down the line for those structures and that information will be coming to you. It's still somewhat unknown. So there is a possibility that we would not be doing the pavilions at the high schools at this time, but we want to see how those bids come in. What would be the dimensions of those shade pavilions? About 20 by 30, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes, a little bit smaller than what we would be doing for the pavilion structures, just based on the size that we have in those courtyard areas. 
Are we going to need county permits to put the slabs in? There will be different permitting structures throughout the county. So in some uh, Church Hill will be required to go through Church Hill permitting in Sudlersville, the town of Sudlersville, right. and then Centerville. the others, Queen Anne's County. So that's part of what the contractor will be responsible for, is helping us to work through permitting in each of those areas. And what we've been able to do is is figure out how every school would work, right? So the plan, we have plans for every single school. So in the event we're not able to do some based upon funding, materials, whatever it may be, we still have that plan so that if it comes at a later date, we can pull those plans and, and continue on with what we were you know, proposing. Yes, yeah, so that we would be able to phase this project and ask for additional funding down the line if we're not able to do all of the structures within this grant. Uh, do we know if all the other schools besides the high schools, since we do the concrete, do we know if we have enough impervious land to still be able to be allowed to put in the size of a concrete? Yes, so we have had Becker Morgan and their civil engineering department look at all of that as part of the scope. The services for Becker Morgan has been paid for also by this grant. This hasn't come out of, okay, thank you. So we'll continue, so our plan is to continue to update you all as we go forward. We wanna make sure that we're being transparent with, with how this process is going. Um, and uh, you know, our plan is to continue to do that and make sure that everybody knows um, what's going on. We're super excited. Um, it has been, uh, you know, a really cool experience, uh, one, to get the funding, two, to kind of work through the process of figuring out where these are going and hear the excitement from the teachers and hear the excitement from the principals that they'll they'll have another place that they can go out and they can instruct, um, you know, getting that fresh air outside and going and, and working outside and having that additional spot is is really something I, I, I there's a lot of buzz around the schools talking about uh, these structures, so it's, it's a really cool um, and exciting um, project that we're, we're, we're going towards, so. And I'll give a kudos to Mr. Page because he's done a great job of keeping this on track as well as bringing the vision that he saw when he wrote this grant to fruition. So we're, we're really following that plan and I think everyone's gonna be really excited. Well done, Michael. Thank, Thank you. you. I, I applaud the effort to provide our schools with an additional educational setting, right. other than a you know traditional classroom. It's, Brick and mortar, get it, them out. Yeah, there. getting them out, and God forbid we ever have COVID again. You know, we can use it without right. worrying about that, right? Well, thank you all very much. Yes. Does anyone else have any other questions? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, all right, thank you. Thank you all. Have a good night. Thank you. You too. Good night. Yes. And uh, next item, current action items, uh, an alteration to the FY21 and 23 CIP funding. Yes. I'm back Boy. again. <laughs> So good evening, everyone. Thank you for your time tonight. Uh, for the record, Carla Pullen, Facilities Planner for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. So over the recent past, and I would venture to say last two years, we've been talking to you about the difficulty in our construction bidding climate. Since the pandemic, construction costs are on the rise around the country, um, and at this point, unfortunately, don't seem to be going on the downward spiral yet. This is especially true for our roofing projects, but we're also seeing trouble with our glass, our wood, our steel, many of the items that we need to use for buildings. Unfortunately, the funding at the state level is not infinite, so I'm here tonight to ask your approval to modify our capital improvement plans, which is something that's necessary to do before May 31st. That's the state deadline. It's essentially an administrative action, and it's gonna assure that the funds that were allotted to us through the CIP stay in the pot of money that goes to Queen Anne's County Public Schools. It will not revert then back to the state pool that would be available from any county to pull from, so it's enough 
effort to preserve that funding for our projects. So the request for approval tonight does three things. The first is we're gonna ask to rescind the state funding for the roof replacement project at Kent Island High School and the window and door replacement at Bayside Elementary School. This is gonna give us almost 2.9 million to put back into our reserve account and provided that the IAC allows us to do that and also approves this request, then that funding, that money will go toward the overages that we've seen in our bids for the Bayside Elementary School roofing project, the Ken Island Elementary School roofing project, and the Sudlersville Elementary School chiller project. So it's going to fund three different projects for us. The second and third part of this request kind of go together. We would also ask to rescind the state funding for Sudlersville Elementary school for the chiller replacement and at the same school the fire alarm replacement for fiscal year 21 CIP which it is expiring at the end of May and instead we will ask the state to reallot this by amending our fiscal year 23 request so we're going to put it into our current year's budget so that we can pull from it on July 1st. If you're in agreement with these requests, I anticipate that this action will allow us to get bids for Bayside Elementary School Roof, Kent Island Elementary School Roof, the Sudlersville Elementary School Chiller, and the Sudlersville Elementary School Fire Alarm projects back to you. And if you approve of those bids, then we'll have them under contract by the end of July. So by rescinding these projects, we hopefully can, can do four of those that the funding has not been ample for. So what happens to, how how are we with the Kent Island High School? Like, can it yes. sustain the roof that it has? So what our plan is, is to reapply for funding with the extra amount in our either CIP funding for fiscal year 24, which we will submit in October, or through the Healthy School Fund, which is a large pot of money that has been allotted by the governor for air quality projects, but they are now prioritizing roofing, and therefore the state has said, let's try for that and see if we can, out of one of the two, get the funding back for that. So it would not be put on hold for very long, but we would have the available funds. We, are, we have about $4 million of available funding for Ken Island's roof, and the bids just came in at over eight. So they're just really, is some difficulty there. Which means it would be put off until next summer. Correct. And the roof is in a good enough repair at the time, right now. At this time it fine. is. We've been proactive about replacing specifically the shingles and any repairs that need to be done there. The hope is to go back and replace those areas with metal because shingles right beside the bay have not been mm -mm. long withstanding. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's the area that's probably most of a deficit. Um, we do roofing inspections twice a year, so we're keeping tabs on any areas where there's possibly leaks. And again, it's just coming to the end of its useful life. We know we need to do the repair. Um, roofing, unfortunately, is the one that has just skyrocketed with all of our beds. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. Comments? Good. Good. So instead of reading this entire purpose, I'm <laughs> going to ask, do I have a motion to accept the alteration of the FY21 and 23 CIP funding as presented by Mrs. Pullen? So moved. Second. Second. Any questions or comments on the motion? Hearing none, I call for the vote on the motion to what I just said. All in favor say aye. 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 All opposed say no, the ayes have it. The motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you, appreciate it. We now have uh, future meetings and events. Uh, we have our, most, our board meeting on June 1st, 2022, also graduation day. And then our work session on June 15th, 2022. Does anyone have anything else for the cause? Fantastic, do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved. Second. Second. Questions, comments? Vote yay. Yay. Ayes have it. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Jeff. Have a good evening. <laughs>